Hello. So in this video we want to continue our march towards understanding the ideas of general relativity by discussing geodesics. So what is a geodesic? So uh, we see that a geodesic generalizes the idea of a straight line. So just like in the plane we had that the shortest distance between two points was a straight line between the points and this was no longer true kind of on the sphere because this, this, the shortest distance between two points was this great circle, which was no longer uh, a straight line when we projected it down onto a map. So this, this curved surface didn't really have a straight line, but we're going to define a geodesic, which is kind of the generalization of this idea on the curved surface of, of a sphere. So um, really what a geodesic is, it is an extremum of distance which doesn't mean that it's the shortest distance between two points. Um, every, whenever you have the shortest distance between two points, it is a geodesic, but not all geodesics are the shortest distance between points. So to illustrate this, here's, here's a sphere like the Earth, and uh, I'm going to draw three of them, and we're going to see what is and is not a geodesic. So here's our three, and we're going to consider the same two points in every case. So let's say we have this point here and this nearby point here. And what are what is a geodesic? So let's draw this thing, which is a great circle between the two points. So is that a geodesic? Well, yes, it's an extremum of distance, which means if I change the path by a little bit, if I like wiggle it up like here, it becomes longer. So this is a geodesic, yes. But what about this other guy where I go all the way around the back of the Earth and then come back here? So this is also an extremum of the distance, because if I wiggle the path by a little bit, if I kind of uh, slide a path, um, if I wiggle it like up a bit in the pack or something like this, then it makes the path longer, although it's not the shortest path between those two points. There's no way we can kind of deform this path to get it towards this guy without making it longer in between. So this is also a geodesic, but what about this thing here, where we take this weird, weird, crazy path between the two points? So this will not be a geodesic, because we can deform the path towards uh, the straight line path between the two points and make it shorter. So this is, um, this is not a geodesic at all, so that's a counterexample. So in order to understand what a geodesic is mathematically, and to be able to lead those up, we'll need to define this very uh, obscure, ugly-looking object called the Christoffel symbol. So we will need Christoffel symbols, and this is why we discussed this um, this metric and Greek indices and things like that in the last video. So the definition, I'm just going to write it and make no apologies. So we use this, this capital Greek letter gamma, uh, or sorry, lambda. This is a, no, this is a gamma, sorry, gamma. Gamma, sigma, mu, nu. So this is an object which has three indices, so I need to tell you, for example, sigma is one, mu is one, nu is one, that gives me a number. Then if sigma is two and mu is one and nu is one, that gives me another number. So this is a collection of many numbers, and it's defined by this fairly ridiculous looking formula. So we have a derivative with respect to the metric, and then another derivative with respect to the metric over here, and then minus a third derivative with different indices. Okay. So don't focus on the details of this. Just remember from the last, uh, the last thing, the video that we discussed, that if we see an index repeated twice, it means to sum over it. So each of these terms, when we distribute the, the g, this means we're going to have a sum over the index row. And in the last video, I was playing kind of fast and loose with up and down indices because we were using a metric which was just diagonal with ones. So it didn't matter if it was up or down. But in general, it does matter if it's, if it's up or down. So um, where what we really mean is if a vector has a down index v mu, then that's really a sum over, um, so this is really mu alpha v alpha. So this is, this is really what I mean, but let's not get into those details. So this is a complicated object which depends on the metric and derivatives of the metric. So intuitively we might think like, okay, so this metric is an object which tells us what is the distance between nearby points on my surface. And the derivative tells us how does that distance change if we move a little bit along one of the coordinates. 
So it kind of makes rough intuitive sense that derivatives of the metric might capture ideas about curvature, because these mean that if you move a little bit, the, the metric that tells us about the distance between points is going to change. So for example, in the plane where we had uh, the, the metric just had ones and zeros in it, all these derivatives would be zero. And the Christoffel symbols would all be zero, and then the curvature would be zero. So um, let me just plow ahead, and then maybe we can check the intuition a little bit. So a geodesic now, a geodesic curve. So this is we're going to write as a function uh, x lambda of t. So for example, this is this is uh, using the Greek indices before. So for example, if we're in the plane, we could have lambda equals one and two. So x one would be x of t, and x two equals y of t. So these are two functions that tell you the x and y coordinates of your curve at a point in time. So this is kind of like a particle moving around in the plane, which traces out in a cur uh, curve. So um, anyway, so if that curve is a geodesic, then it must be true that the second derivative of x lambda with respect to time plus this Christoffel symbol, lambda mu nu, dx mu dt dx nu dt equals zero. So it's very likely that your eyes are glossing over at this point because we're discussing all of this very abstract stuff. So uh, let's just try to get the intuition. So a geodesic is a curve which extremizes the distance. In the examples we're interested in, it's the shortest distance between two points. We're interested in that because in general relativity, our big idea is that particles will take the shortest path between points in space-time. So particles will travel on geodesics, so we're interested in that. To understand this, we need this complicated object, which depends on derivatives of our metric, which was this nice guy that we discussed that tells us about the distances between nearby points. And if our curve is a geodesic, it has to satisfy this equation, which tells us things about the first and second derivative of our curve and this weird Christoffel symbol object. So for example, for example, let me switch color to keep things fresh. So for example, in the plane that we remember discussing, so for example, in the plane, we had that the metric g mu nu is 1, 0, 0, 1. So derivatives of these numbers are all zero because we see no variables like x's in them. So each derivative del mu g nu rho and so on equals zero. So, uh, and hence all of the Christoffel symbols, these gamma, sigma, mu, nu equals zero. Then the equation that a geodesic has to satisfy is the second derivative, second derivative x lambda with respect to time equals zero. But we kind of knew this already. We knew that a geodesic, the shortest distance between points in the plane, was a straight line. And we already know from, from calculus that the second derivative of a straight line with respect to really either of its variables, if we, if we parameterize this as x and y as functions of time instead of y as a function of x like you're used to, then both of those are just linear functions. And as you take the second derivative of a linear function, you get zero. So this makes sense, although this geodesic equation, let me box this because this is one of our really important results. This is going to tell us how a particle moves in a curved spacetime. And then the second big equation we'll need in Einstein is Einstein's equation, which tells us how a spacetime becomes curved. So this is, we're kind of halfway to understanding general relativity. This is the geodesic equation. So this is a big deal. So next, in the next video, we'll see how to generalize this idea. We've been talking about curves in space. We want to make the jump and talk about curves in space-time instead. And then we can start discussing the, uh, the way the Einstein equation comes about. Thanks for watching.